Then Ford and GM are like, that's no big deal. We'll get a couple of double A's. We'll, we'll strap it to an F-150. And people will buy it, right? People are stupid enough to buy whatever we sell. Not anymore. Tesla is dominating the EV space so much that Ford and GM are basically reconsidering their entire business model. And I got to say, as a Tesla owner, this is the way it should be, right? This is the way, as they say. But this is not the way for Ford and GM. They cannot turn a profit. We covered a, a story a few weeks ago about how Ford has lost, I, I believe it's close to $44 billion dollars on trying to make EVs work. Ford loses $36,000 on every EV it sells. Ford and GM are in such a world of pain. And it's really because of their own decisions, right? You take a look at it. Tesla had a 10 year head start on them on how to figure out how to make electric vehicles profitable and exciting and desirable to their customers. Then Ford and GM are like, that's no big deal. We'll get a couple of double A's. We'll, we'll strap it to an F-150 and, uh, and, and people will buy it, right? People are stupid enough to buy whatever we sell. Not anymore. Not anymore. If anybody is looking for an EV, they're not looking at Ford. They're not looking at GM. They're only looking at Tesla. Tesla is the bar. And everybody else is trying to just recreate what Tesla has done. And Tesla just wipes the floor with them. Hey, if you're just tuning in, my name is Chris Friul, and we talk about the biggest headlines of the day and what the AI trading data says about it. So if you're interested in that too, be sure to definitely hit the subscribe button down below and start trading with AI today. Go to ovtlyr.com to see why outliers win. Now let's continue looking at this, right? Ford and GM both announced changes to their EV production targets amid profitability challenges. Yeah, the challenges, they ain't got any profitability, right? The automakers' profits and causing them to reevaluate their EV plans amid a price war and supply chain challenges. Hey, last time I checked, buying a Tesla was the best experience I've ever had. In fact, I'll give you a breakdown of how great it was. You go on the Tesla website, you select the kind, right? Model S, Y, X, or um, three. You select, do you want the fast one, the performance, or do you want the standard range one? Then you select your color on the inside, you select your color on the outside, and then you put your $250 deposit down. It's done. It's legitimately just like ordering from Amazon. And every time I've bought the car, I bought a car in the past, you have to go into the dealership. And then you have to negotiate with the dealership to get the price that you want. And then you have to go into the financing room and you have to negotiate with the finance manager about how they don't screw you over on the rates, right? It's a pain in the backside. And then to top it all off, during COVID, they decided, bro, this is our chance. We're gonna make so much money on these idiots, right? And so dealers jacked up the prices on everything. If, if the price was already $50,000, they'd say market adjustment and another $50,000 or whatever the case is. I saw some outlandish market adjustments out there. And now people are looking at this like, your cars suck, your dealers suck. I don't wanna do anything with you ever again. The entire business model that GM and Ford and Stellantis have built is on the edge of complete failure. And in addition to that, the UAW, the workers assembling the cars, they're not even working. They may not even go back to work ever again unless they get a 40% pay raise, ridiculous cuts in hours with a boost to their uh, income. And somehow these automakers who have basically doubled the price of every car that they sell are going to have to double their price of every car they sell again because of these auto workers, because they have to make up for the fact that they lose all this money on EVs. They're toast. They cannot compete with Tesla. And this has become a Tesla-centric channel, it feels like these days, but they can't. They cannot compete with Tesla. Ford noted in its earnings that EV units posted a quarterly loss of $1.3 billion in that quarter. And that's a bigger loss of $1.08 billion in the prior quarter. And that's cutting production of its Mustang Mach-E and scaling back $12 billion on investments in their EVs, including delaying a second battery pack in Kentucky. Basically, Ford is throwing in the towel. They're like, we can't make money on these. Nobody wants to buy them. We're just not gonna make them anymore. That's, at the end of the day, it feels like they're about to just shut down their entire EV line, which is hilarious because in California, California's already like ahead of the car. Listen, I, I do not ever like anything California does. As a uh, born and bred, tried and true blue blood Texan, 
I should say red blood Texan. I don't like anything that California does. But California has basically, basically said, you are only going to sell EVs in California. I don't remember the exact date. Maybe it was 2030 or 2035, something like that. So, so Ford is thrown in the towel and they're like, well, I guess we'll sell the other 49 states. <laughs> I don't know where they're going with this, but it certainly is not going anywhere to profitability anytime soon. Uh, Jim Farley, the CEO of Ford, said, great products is not enough in the EV business anymore. Well, maybe you should sell great products there, Jim Farley. Maybe as the CEO of Ford, you should go in a road trip in your Ford truck to see just how sh not so great those trucks are. Oh, wait, he did. In fact, there's a whole YouTube video. You should Google it up. Jim Farley drives uh, F-150 Lightning. And he went on a road trip, and it sucked. He, as the CEO of Ford, was like, I did not realize the challenges out there for people. Because the charging infrastructure on anything besides a Tesla blows. The CCS adapters, the non-Tesla charging stations, all of that just does not work. I've seen so many videos of people taking a road trip to show the difference in driving a Tesla and driving anything else. And they'll roll up to a Tesla charger, they'll charge it, everything's hunky-dory, they're on their way. They'll roll up to, uh, uh, what is it called? EV America or EVgo or like ChargePoint, stuff like that. And they have to go to three or four different stalls before they even find one that works. And then when they find one that works, it's only going at like a quarter of the speed that's rated for. So imagine you go to the gas station, half the pumps don't work. And the other half that do go half as fast as you're expecting them to go. So instead of a 10 minute pit stop, you're looking at a 45 minute pit stop because you have to keep going and finding the one that actually does work. Where's that the Tesla stations? And I don't know why everything just seems to work there. Every time I've gone to a supercharger, you roll up, you plug in, you're done. You don't have to get out your card. You don't have to do anything. You go back in your car, you go to the restroom, you go grab a drink, you come back. And at least in my experience, walking from the Tesla chargers into the place and then coming back out, I've got 50% battery. And that may not sound like much, but 50% battery is going to get me two hours down the road. So it makes life a lot easier just by using the Tesla chargers, which I know that they are going to adapt to the NACS, that's the uh, Tesla charging standard here in the next uh, couple years or so. But even the CEO of Ford says, having great products is not enough in the EV business anymore. They have to be totally competitive on cost because affordability is an issue for consumers when considering EV purchases. It is, especially when Tesla can just drop the price like that. How many times have we seen Tesla just nail the price down, put a nail in the coffin for everybody else? That's Tesla's prerogative. Tesla can do that because they don't have dealers. They don't have market adjustments. Tesla says, this is what our cars go for. But if nobody's buying it, hey, we can lower it. No big deal. We already are making tons of money on these. The Model Y is the best-selling car in America for a reason. The Model Y costs less than the average new car price. When you add in the uh, $7,500 tax credit, you get insane value and you get the top of the line in the EV industry, and you get what everybody else is chasing. And it's kind of cool, kind of cool too. And it's fast as, as, as all get out, and it's a lot of fun. And uh, on the GM side, they saw a quarterly profit reduced by $1.5 billion because of higher costs of selling more EVs. They can't make EVs that anybody wants. We're also moderating, so this is uh, CEO Mary Barra coming from uh, GM. We're also moderating the acceleration of EV production to protect our pricing. <laughs> <laughs> protect our pricing. Are you serious? You've priced yourself out of any consumer these days. Adjusting to slower near-term growth demand. Yeah, slowing near-term growth demand because your EVs suck. Nobody wants to buy them. And implementing engineering efficiencies. Yeah, corporate buzzwords, right? Uh, for, uh, hey, we, we've, we, we can't make this work as it is. And other improvements that will make our vehicles less expensive to produce, which that's great if it actually happens, and more profitable. And they're going to have to be more profitable because the UAW is taking every single cent out of GM. So at the end of the day, GM and Ford are both dope. They're, they're, they're done for. They're done for toast. Nobody can compete with Tesla. Speaking of Tesla, let's go see what the AI trading data says about Tesla. We actually got a sell signal back on October 24th, so about a week ago. So if you're a Tesla owner, maybe, maybe the time, now maybe the time 
to uh, get out of your shares and go back to cash. And in fact, the signal return has generated 233.88% in the past. So if you're interested in getting your hands on these AI trading signals, go to ovtlyr.com to see why outliers win. Now let's go see what the internet's saying about it, right? Taking a look at this tweet here, General Motors, Ford, and Stellantis lost the combined two and a half billion dollars in earnings because of the strikes. And that's what De uh, Deutsche Bank has estimated. Bigger news, they're quitting the EV business. <laughs> yeah, what a disappointment. So that means they're about to reach an agreement, right? Right? Soon it'll be over, right? Yeah, that's not too bad. We're just going to lose $2.5 billion. Um, let's see. Not going to last much longer at this rate. No, they're not. The age of consumers who only buy Ford and GM products is over. Because there's so much better out there. And it costs a hell of a lot less. Hey, listen, I have no idea how the YouTube algorithm works, but it thinks you're going to love one of these two videos. So click one of these to watch more. Thank you so much for tuning in today's Outlier Live. I'll see you on the next episode.